Hello. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Murder rents a room. Yes, we have that crime club book for you. Come right over. chair by the window. Comfortable? The book is on this shelf. Here it is. Murder Rents a Room by Sarah Elizabeth Mason. The very intriguing story of an old homestead that sold hospitality until death became a border. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. The great plantation of Cliff's Edge had once been the pride and the showplace of the community. But that had been a long time ago, and nobody remembered. Now it was just thousands of acres of dried-out, desolate land. And on the house that had once been magnificent, there was a sign. Hunting, fishing, rooms for rent. Yes, times had certainly changed on the great plantation of Cliff's Edge. It was late morning of a fine spring day, just three days after the body of Uncle Brock Curtis had been found in the swamp, a bullet in his head. Now Uncle Brock was lying peacefully among his ancestors on the hill, and his survivors, having paid their last respects, were in the huge living room of the house, waiting. Yes, they were waiting for Lee Randall to read the will. And so was Sheriff Bill Davies, as he stood unnoticed by the door with Tom, his deputy. Well, how about it, Lee? All right, Kitty. Give me a moment to break the seal. Want me to get you an axe? Kitty! What's the matter with you, Kate? You might be a little more respectful. Uncle Brock hasn't been in his grave more than half an hour. I've shed all the tears I'm going to. I'm tired, honey. Very, very tired. I'd like to get some rest for a change. <clears throat> in the name of God, amen. <sighs> I, Brock Curtis, being of sound mind and body, but aware of the uncertainty of this life... Hey, can't you skip the forest and get right down to the mushrooms? All right, Kitty. Kate gets this house in the grounds. Hmm, so this is what happens when my back is turned. I stayed here with Uncle Brock and helped him run the place. Yes. How I wish you'd stayed in New York. I'll bet. Go ahead, Lee. Thanks. <clears throat> the uh, rest of the property goes as follows. One-third to Kate... One-third to me, and one-third to you, Kitty. Well, Lee, what about Jeff? Isn't there anything... I'd better read that part, Kate. I make no provision for my worthless nephew, Jeffrey Gaines, for reasons that my said nephew should clearly understand. Poor Jeff. And he's the one who really needs help. How much do we get, Lee? A little over 2000 apiece, Kitty. 2000 Are you kidding? Uncle Brock was a rich man. My father once said he was the richest man in the township. That was a long time ago. When he died, all he had to his name was this property and a little over $6,000. That's true, Kitty. Kate and I checked his papers yesterday. I'm afraid Uncle Brock made some pretty bad investments none of us knew about. You don't say. We found a pile of no-good stock certificates in the safe. I don't believe it. I've got them in my office at the bank. Anytime you want to see them, I'll be glad to show them to you. I still wouldn't believe it. Look here, Kitty. Are you suggesting that Lee and I... No, dear. Not while the sheriff and his deputy are listening. Don't stop now, Miss Kitty. You're doing fine. You got any proof of what you've been saying? My Sheriff Davies, I haven't said a thing. About them stock certificates being phony? I knew Uncle Brock. We all knew that dear Uncle Brock loved cash and that he trusted nobody to count it for him. That's no reason to be making statements, young lady. Did I do such a terrible thing, Sheriff? I'm sorry. I guess I'm just tired. I'm going to my room. Will I see you later, Lee? I don't think so. And well, you might be wrong. That nasty little troublemaker. She hasn't changed a bit. What about the murder, Miss Kate? I told you everything I knew three days ago, Sheriff Bill. Uncle Brock disappeared right after breakfast. I went to look for him, and I found his body in the swamp. But no gun. Where was Miss Kitty? Didn't she tell you that she'd gone riding? Yep, yeah, just checking. Story's got a way of changing with time. 
Now, Mr. Randall, when can I see about them stocks that belong to Brock? Any time after lunch. I'll be in my office all afternoon. Okay. Come on, Tom. We gone, Chief? When I say come on, that means we're going. Sure. Well, goodbye for now, Miss Kate. Oh, uh, by the way, what's Jeff Gaines using for eating and drinking money these days? I help him whenever I can. Was he counting on some of Brock Curtis's cash? Sheriff Davis. Just uh, checking. You never know what's what when there's been a murder. Hey, Chief, we're passing Jeff's farm. I know. Okay, but I figured you wanted to talk to him. Changed my mind, Tom. We're going back to headquarters. Uh Uh-huh. You got an angle? Maybe. Going to relax and let nature take its course. I see. There are four parts to this puzzle, and Jeff's only one of them. Sure. We do nothing until all four parts get moving. If them stock certificates are phony, then somebody's got a lot of cash that belonged to Brock. Yeah, but what's that got to do with nature? Human nature, Tom. Nobody likes to be left out in the cold. Well, goodbye, Kate. I've got to rush back to town. I'll phone you later. But, Lee, I was expecting you to have lunch. Some other time. This is a business day. I may be only second vice president, but the bank still needs me. All right. Do me a favor, please. Forget what Kitty said. I can't. But I told you, she didn't mean it. She was disappointed about the inheritance and got excited. She knew Sheriff Bill Davies was in the living room with us, listening to every word. But she didn't realize, and she apologized. Oh, yes. It's about time you recognized her favorite pastime, getting people into trouble and then apologizing. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. If those stocks are fraudulent, then Kitty will have to prove how she knew. She's just guessing. Goodbye, Kate. And please don't tangle with her. All right, Lee. Remember that. I'll speak to you later. Kitty? Hello, darling. What were you doing in Uncle Brock's room? Looking around. What for? Ooh, the little things that always point to a murderer. You know, like a safe that can be opened by anybody. You know there was never any secret about that safe, Kitty. No. And nobody ever went to it except Uncle Brock. Nobody, dear. Kitty, I'm warning you. If you're bent on making trouble... What will happen? Will my body be found in the swamp, too, with a bullet in my head? What do you want? My share of Uncle Brock's money. You're getting it. Yes, darling, but not where I like it. Think of Jeff. He gets nothing. You're changing the subject, dear. Kitty, why don't you try to be reasonable? It isn't my fault or Lee's fault that Uncle Brock made those investments. You know how he kept things to himself. Yes, I know. Lee checked those stocks through the bank. And when he told me they were worthless... You sat right down and quiet. Oh, shut up. How do you think I feel about losing my share of $150,000? I could never imagine. Owning a lot of paper in companies that don't even exist anymore. Do you think I like it? Then why don't we make a deal? What do you mean? You killed Uncle Brock, honey. Did I? Don't misunderstand. I'm not complaining. Just give me half the money and we'll kiss and make up. You're very shrewd, Kitty. But not smart. Business before compliments, cousin dear. Do you think asking me for money is going to make you look innocent? Oh, a twist to the table and I'm under it, huh? Why did you come back from New York? I couldn't resist the call of the wild. You were gone for two years and not one letter from you. But four days ago, just one day before Uncle Brock was murdered, you came home. Why? Don't get wound up, Kate. You needed money, didn't you? You're liable to break a spring. Didn't you? And you knew exactly where to find it. Then you admit those stocks are phony. You were the first one to bring that up. Excuse me while I eat my words. Was it part of your plan to get the sheriff to suspect everyone but you? No, dear. It was my plan to get what I was entitled to. But I'll take what's left. You've done such a good job of convincing me. What have you done with the money? You don't seem to understand, Kate. I'm agreeing with you. There is no money. Except $6,000 and a lot of worthless paper. Hello, Jeff. Kitty. Kitty, sweet. What do you want here? Are you still mad at me? You've got no right to come to my house. Leave me alone. Jeff. Get away from me. You still love me, don't you? If I wanted to come back to you, what would you say? What would I say? Let's go in. 
Kitty, are you asking me what I would say? Look at this place, Jeff. How can you live in such filth? You get used to a lot of things when you don't care. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't nice two years ago when I broke our engagement went to New York. I can forget that now. They tell me you've become a drunkard and you've let your farm go to rot. Oh, Jeff, I was such a crazy fool. Yeah, I sure hated you, Kitty. I swore if I ever saw you again, I'd kill you. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? I was going to kill you. <laughs> You're a little drunk, aren't you? Uh, yes, I am, but I can see you. That's enough for me. No, Jeff, please. What's the matter? Every reunion starts off with a kiss. No, not now. We've got so much to talk about. Sure. You don't like the smell of my breath. And I need a shave. Okay, let's talk. Jeff, why didn't you come to Uncle Brock's house these last four days? Because he told me you were there. He told you when? The night before he was killed. I met him on the road. That old miser didn't even own a car. Cost too much. Horses are cheaper. Carriages don't use gasoline. Yes, I know. He gave me plenty when I breezed in with my car. I got taxes due on this property and a payment on the mortgage. I asked him to give me a loan to help me out. What do you think he said? And him with all that cash in his safe. Jeff, did you ever see it? Nobody ever saw it. You know that. Or smelled it either. But it was there. Everybody knew it was there. And it's still there, waiting to be spent. No, it I... isn't. What did you say? Somebody stole it. Now, see here, Kitty, I've got a great sense of humor, but don't take any bets on it. Don't get excited. You didn't lose anything. I didn't expect anything. He told me he was going to cut me out of his will. But Kate promised to pay off my debt so I can keep my home. Kate! She was here the day before yesterday after Sheriff Bill and Tom got through asking me a lot of silly questions. She told me not to worry. Jeff, don't believe everything you hear. What are you talking about? You're not getting any help. Sheriff Davies is going to arrest you for the murder of Uncle Brock. What? Me? That's right. He's out building up his case right now. But I didn't kill him. How do you think that'll sound in court? Coming from you. Oh, yeah. From a no-good bum. Who put him up to it, Kitty? Well, I don't know for sure, Jeff, but... After the funeral, after Lee went back to town, the sheriff and Kate had a long conference. That's a lie, Kitty. What? Kate's the one person in this world who wouldn't try to hang me. Would I? Oh. Thank you for being so frank. Goodbye, Jeff. I'll see you in the death house. Kitty, wait. Look, I, did, I didn't mean to give you any wrong impression. I, I'm just not too clear upstairs yet. You've only got one real friend now, darling. Keep that in mind. Oh, but it doesn't seem possible that Kate would... Kitty, don't you understand? She loves me. A hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth? The little thing she's done that proved it over and over again. She, she'd bring me money. She knew I was going to buy whiskey with it. She brought me my meals every day. Cooked meals. Uncle Brock's been murdered and his money is gone. Once when she thought I was out cold, she... She kissed me and said how much she loved me. I wanted to cry because... I, I was thinking of you. Jeff, are you going to listen to me? What do you want me to do, Kitty? Believe that Kate is framing me. Believe that I love you. Sure. All right. Now, we've got to get away from here as soon as possible. I'm ready. But I want Uncle Brock's money. What? My share of it. He left it to me, and we'll need it, Jeff. Do you want me to find it? Yes, speak to Kate. Ask her to marry you. What? Yes, that's good. Tell her her husband can't testify against his wife. She'll go for that, Jeff. Maybe I... Maybe I ought to shave first, huh? Oh, you think of everything, don't you? No, you do. I just fall in line like a well-trained monkey. Sheriff! Sheriff Davies! Huh? Hello, Miss Kitty. What brings you to town? I've got to talk to you about something very important. Mm-hmm. Want to come into my office? No, no, I can tell you right here. I've just been to see Jeff Gaines. Was he sober enough to see you? Take a look at this. Okay. What's so special about a $50 bill? I found it on the floor in Jeff's house. You did what? Jeff was drunk. He didn't realize I picked it up. That should solve your mystery, Sheriff. Yeah. Where would he get a $50 bill except from... You talk to anyone else about this, Miss Kitty? Not a soul. Good for you. I'll do all the talking that has to be done. Oh, to think that I came so close to marrying him two years ago. Are you going to arrest him now? No. But, but that $50 bill... It don't make a case, young lady. 
But maybe after I've seen Mr. Lee Randall and them stock certificates at the bank, it will make a case. Go on, Tom. Okay, Chief. Let's go. Hmm. A lot of gold mining stocks, huh, Mr. Randall? Uncle Brock seems to have had a preference for them, Sheriff. Yeah, and here's some shares in an oil company in Peru. Are these all the stocks you got? All of them, representing 18 different companies. And uh, all of them out of business? For years. Before Brock put money into them? Before? Didn't you check that when you checked the companies? My note never occurred to me. Hey, Tom. Yeah, Chief? Get some paper and make a bundle. We're taking this stuff to headquarters. Okay, Chief. But, Sheriff Davies, I need those certificates. So do I. I'm filing Uncle Brock's will for probate. These prove what's... What, well, what's become of his estate. They might prove a lot more, Mr. Randall, when I get through with them. Jeff? Jeff, are you home? Yes, I'm home. Kate? Who else? <laughs> the Queen of Sheba? I brought you some lunch. I'm sorry I'm so late, but... Why, Jeff, what are you dressed all up in your Sunday suit for? Still looks good, doesn't it? It's the first time I've worn it in two years. Why? I thought you might like to see me as a human being for a change. You've never looked like anything else to me, Jeff. Thanks. I was going to call on you at Cliff's Edge. It's clean there, and... Kate, there's something I want to... I've been wanting to talk to you about for a long time. Yes, Wait a minute. Well, what's the matter? There's a car coming. Oh, for pity's sake. What are you so nervous about? I've been watching every car for the past hour. Looking out of the window like a hunted criminal? Shut up. Why? It's turning into my driveway. It's the sheriff and Tom. What? I ought to kill you for this, Kate. No. You sent for them, didn't you? You told them to meet you here. You were bringing me lunch. A cooked lunch. But that takes time to eat. What are you taking down that shotgun for? You're not going to frame me, Kate. I'm going to be just outside this back window. And I'm going to be listening. If you so much as tell them where I am, I'll kill the three of you. Why, Sheriff Bill. Hello, Miss Kate. Tell Jeff we'd like to see him. He isn't here. Since when? Well, I don't know. I came here a few minutes ago with some lunch I'd fixed for him. And there was nobody home, huh? Okay, we'll just look around. I'm not lying to you, Sheriff. Nobody ever does, Miss Chief. Go ahead, Tom. You know what to do. Okay, Chief. And uh, don't forget to look in the closets, too. Okay, Chief. Sheriff Bill, would you mind telling me what this is all about? We got a tip there was some money in this house. Here? Who told you? Miss Kitty. She found a $50 bill on the floor. When? A couple of hours ago. I see. <laughs> it uh, ain't funny, Miss Kate. Oh, Sheriff, it's a riot. Kitty walks in and there's $50. I've never had such luck. Are you saying she didn't find it? I'm saying she did. But not here. Mm-hmm. Where? In Uncle Brock's safe. Can you prove it? Why did she come back from New York? She hates Cliff's Edge and everything that goes with it. That ain't proof, Miss Kate. All right. Then account for the fact that Uncle Brock was murdered just one day after she came back. That still ain't proof, and until you got it, I'm going to keep on thinking what I'm thinking. Say, Chief. Yeah, what is it, Tom? He ain't here. You searched the whole house? Four rooms and two closets. That's all there is. Okay. Now we'll start taking this place apart. You won't find any money. You sure of that? I'm sure Jeff isn't a murderer. Mm-hmm. You got a pretty good crush on that fella, ain't you? Now, see here, Sheriff Bill. Well, that's all right. Being in love is a mighty fine thing. But don't let it go to your head. Katie, you sure? Yes, of course, Lee. They're still at his house looking for the money. Good grief. Uh, but what about the stocks? They must be fraudulent. Lee, I'm sure now Uncle Brock had all that money in his safe. Where's Jeff? I don't know. Kate, don't start lying to me now. You've told me everything else. I don't know where he is. I thought he was outside the window. When I left his house, I, I walked around to the side to see if he was still there. Of course he wasn't. And he's not here at Cliff's Edge, either. Oh, Lee, what am I going to do? 
He might be wandering around in the swamp. I can't think of a place that suits him better. He didn't kill Uncle Brock. Stop talking nonsense. I'm not. Kitty did it. She went to Jeff's house, and then she went right to the sheriff with a $50 bill Jeff never saw. She's framing him. Is that what you want to believe? It's the truth, Lee. It's just what Kitty would do. Well, I'm sorry, Kate, but I can't agree with you. Not in this case. All right. Be like the rest of them. Just because Jeff is down and out. Oh, you make me sick. The whole pack of you. What's all the excitement about, Lee? You ought to know, Kitty. You found the evidence. Oh. Yes. Uh, but I'm not so sure they'll be able to convict Jeff. What's that? Well, he may be innocent, you know. Now, look here, Kitty. Don't let a $50 bill give you peace of mind, Lee. It could have been planted. Why should it give me peace of mind? You killed Uncle Brock. What? Don't look so wild. I can keep a secret. Have you gone out of your mind? No, dear. Then how can you make such a fantastic accusation? Because I'm a little adding machine, and when I get to 150000 the bell rings. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for the laugh. Kitty, you're trying too hard. You always were a big bluffer. If you had had any evidence against what me... What were you doing in the swamp this morning? Huh? Where Uncle Brock's body was found. What's this, a new angle? Don't tell me you weren't there. I followed you when you left Kate's house. Then you must have seen me drive right here to the bank. I saw you drive to the swamp. Were you looking for this little cufflink with your initials on it? You found it in Kate's house, didn't you? With all this mud on it, Lee? Don't say that to Kate. She'd be insulted. I lost it there sometime this morning, and I didn't realize it until I was halfway to town. You're getting weaker, darling. I meant to phone her about it. When I got to the office, people were waiting. I completely forgot. Keep punching. You put that mud on there. Swamp mud. It'll match if the sheriff makes a test. But he doesn't have to, Lee. Kate tried to tell me you killed Uncle Brock and that you were framing Jeff. That $50 bill, just like that cuff link. Hey, Kitty? <laughs> what made you turn on me? Am I easier to frame? I can do business with you. Give me $150,000. Why, you... Get out of here. All right. But it's either you or Jeff. I can make it Jeff. It's up to you. Jeff, you almost scared me into an early grave. Don't ever come from behind a tree without blowing your horn. I've been waiting for you for a long time, Kitty. I was in town. Yeah, I found that out. Where's Kate? I don't know. The last time I saw her, she was at my house talking to the sheriff. Why the shotgun, Jeff? Are you worried? No. I'll stand it up against this tree. Now, you've got nothing to worry about, Kitty. I'm not going to shoot you. Jeff, listen to me. Sure. But let's see how convincing you can uh, be. No. No. Now, go ahead, Kitty. I'm listening. Tell me how much you love me. Uh, you want to marry me, don't you? Uh, You're the only uh, real friend I've got, huh? Uh, All you want is the money Kate stole from you. Kate. Where's the sheriff, Tom? He's in there, Mr. Randall, in the inquiry room. Thanks. Hey, you can't go in. He's got someone... It's all right, it's all right. He sent for me. I'm going to give you one last chance, and you'd better... Oh. Come in, Mr. Randall. I'm glad you got here so fast. What's this about Kitty having been murdered? We found her body in the trunk compartment of her own car. What? It was parked in front of Kate's house. Good Lord. Kate. Yeah, we figured somebody was going to take it for a ride tonight and maybe drop it into a river someplace. Uh, Jeff, maybe. Uh, what do you think, Mr. Randall? Naturally. She'd have been too good a witness for his prosecution. But why is Kate here? She claims she done it. Kate. I've got nothing more to say, Lee. That's how it's been going for a couple of hours. I thought you, being a member of the family... Yes, uh, Sheriff. Would you mind? I'll be in the other room. There's no one crazier than a woman in love. Oh, uh, there's one thing you ought to know, Mr. Randall. Yes? I got a report on those stocks. The companies they were issued for never went out of business. What? I got told they never even existed. Lee, what's the matter? What's the matter? Shut up and leave me alone. Oh. I'm sick and tired of having to make excuses for this family. Lee! You admit you murdered Kitty. Very well. 
Then you must have killed Uncle Brock, too. And don't look to me to get you off. Where you going, Mr. Randall? Get out of my way, Tom. I've got orders to stick with you. The sheriff ain't through yet. You're not going anywhere, Randall. Get back inside. You'd better have a perfect explanation for this, Sheriff Davis. Close that door, Tom. Okay, Chief. Now, Randall, let's have the whole story from the beginning. Well, if you're suggesting that I'm a murderer, maybe I can sue you for false arrest. I can, too. Yeah. All right. Guess I'll have to do the talking. Did uh, you ever see this paper before? I've seen hundreds of government bonds. Uh, this one in particular for $10,000 and with that serial number. It's the negotiable kind. Anybody can sell it. Well, Mr. Randall? How'd you get it? I had an idea your Uncle Brock was too smart a man to keep $150,000 in cash in a safe that wasn't safe. How did you get that So bond? I checked with Mr. Brewster, who used to be the president of your bank. He's a pretty old man, and his remembering ain't what it used to be. But he remembered them bonds Brock Curtis bought 18 years ago. Fifteen of them at 10000 apiece. That's when I got a notion to check the brokerage houses out of town. Yeah, and we found one in Baltimore. That uh, that'll do, Tom. I think Mr. Randall wants to talk now. Well, well, a few weeks ago, Uncle Brock asked me to draw up a will for him. He told me about the bonds. Where were they? In the wall of the cellar. He took me down there and showed me the exact place. I was the only one who knew, so I killed him. Why did you kill Miss Kitty? How did you know I killed her? When I drove up to Kate's house, I saw Jeff running away. Kitty was unconscious, nearly dead from strangulation. Thanks for telling me. Now you've made it solid. You can come in now, Jeff. Sure. I don't mind joining the party. What? <coughs> Has this been a trap? Didn't you know? Maybe not as much as I know now. Jeff gave himself up to me for uh, choking Kitty to death. But when Tom and me went up to Kate's house to have a look... We found a trail of blood. Kitty had been stabbed. Yeah. She was making too much trouble. She always was a troublemaker. Wasn't she, Kate? Okay, Tom. Let's go, Mr. Randall. I'm pretty tired. I think I'll go into my office and put my feet on the desk. Uh, you kids can stay here if you want to. But uh, don't get any notions. Remember, you're on county property. And so closes tonight's crime club book, Murder Rents a Room, based on a story by Sarah Elizabeth Mason. Stedman Coles did the radio adaptation. Roger Bauer produced and directed. Elspeth Eric played Kitty Bowling. Sherling Oliver was Lee Randall. Helen Shields was Kate Frazier. Bill Smith was heard as Jeff Gaines. And Cameron Pudum played Sheriff Bill Davies. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Yes, come over a week from tonight. Good. We have the very intriguing story of a romance that had murder in its heart. It's called Death is a Knockout. In the meantime... Well, in the meantime, there is a new crime club book available this week and every week at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we'll look for you next week. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.